awesome day today. It snowed yesterday, so it wasn't that awesome. But, you know, we got the snow up. So, um, today we're going to be talking about pain uh, in our Try Jesus series. Um, and what is pain? Um, pain is not something that we exactly enjoy. Uh, it's, it's, it's pain, like... We experience this. We all do. Uh, whether you're a child at three years old, all the way up to ninety nine years old, or even older than that, um, we want a happy beginning and ending. We want everything to be peachy. So here's a story for you guys about pain in my own life. Uh, when I was in kindergarten, no, you know I was going to the lunchroom. You know I was a I was I was a cutie. You know I was a little kid. And this girl that was older than me, that was in, uh, that went to my church, was like, hey, Mike. So I was like, hey, I turned around, boom, bust my cheek right on the table. Blood spilling went out. And I had to get stitches. And it was painful for that moment. Like, it was short lived, but it was like, man, like, I still have the scar. Like, it was like a small scar. I still have that. But, like, still, it was painful for me. I was about five, six years old. So that was short lived. But this it's pains that are lifelong, very more scarring than that, like a pain of losing a loved one, uh, you losing yourself, losing a job, it is a tough or pure pill to to swallow. Instead of allowing pain to draw you away from God, you ha- we have to allow it to bring us closer to Him. Pain can be a reason by, that many resist God. Like, they ask, if he loves us so much, why is there pain? That is a great question. And when one digs deeper into the Bible, we find more answers to that question. And many more. God created everything, and God is a God of freedom. So with that, he doesn't want to force us to choose to love him. He wants us to choose. Ultimately, of course, he wants us to love him. What what parent would not? But he doesn't want us since he since he created freedom. He don't he doesn't want to force us. So don't you want a guy like that, a boss, a parent like that? Imagine that uh, your boss has that ultimate love, that agape love. Uh, it's so it's so awesome. It's so sweet. You know what I'm saying? And like, don't you want that? His creation, but his creation shows against them. And that serpent, the devil, pulled Adam and Eve away from him. Now imagine God walking through the garden, calling out to his children. The pain in his voice, despite the calmness. Like, God is a God of control and order. But still, like, if I was God and I saw my children make this decision, I'm like, why? Like, and you just sitting there going through their emotions. It's like, man, I know what I have to do, but I don't want to do it, right? You know what I'm saying? It's like that separation and that sin, that, that void. It's like, if I was there, I would, be like, I would be hurt. He always had a plan, but still his children chose a path that they didn't truly understand. They made a choice that put everything into, into motion. But God... Knew all the outcomes, like I said, that could, that could and would happen, depending on their choice. But still, he gave them freedom to choose. So that question of uh, God allowing violence to happen and all this, like in the Bible, like it shows how God doesn't show favoritism. If something happened, he's gonna he's gonna act on it. Like if somebody attacked, like. If somebody attacks you, like, he's going to act on it. Uh, read the Bible and see all those things that happen. How God is a God of mercy and he's zealous. He's, like, a God of love that, like, he doesn't just sit on the sidelines. Um, and now, put yourself in this movie. God had to come down to earth, to us. Jesus, fully man in God. When he was on the cross, God turned around and cried a true pain, covering his eyes, because he didn't want us to convince him not to die on our behalf when we 
did not deserve such a great gift. Now, what is pain? Is it pain because you don't want to push yourself? You don't want God to take you through the valley, even though you, you know the other ways that you want won't produce nothing for your life, like absolutely nothing. I had to be go through that. And it's like, man, I want what I want. But it's like, I already knew, like, if I went that way, I'll be in the same spot or even worse. Uh, so a verse from the Bible, it says, Pain has come to the people, like the pain of childbirth. But they are like a child who resists being born. The moment of birth has arrived, but they stay in the womb. And that's from Hosea 13, 13. Uh, I was reading from the New Living Translation. If you stay in the womb, refusing to grow, you will be stagnant. Um, and when pain comes, go talk to somebody. When you ball up your emotions, you are set to explode like a ticking time bomb. Many, many people say this. like They say, I got Jesus. I don't need no help. Yet they forget an important aspect of his ministry, which is community. If Jesus wanted to, he could have done his, his ministry by himself, of course. But he wanted to lead and teach, build and grow those around him. So if you're a leader and you're like, I want to do all this by myself, you're not a leader. You're not a leader. Like, who are you leading? Are you leading yourself? You could do that at home. Like, to be honest, you can do that at home. Like, you don't need a leading... You're not leading anything. You're just being a trendsetter. You're being a... Uh, you're being your own boss. You're leading yourself. Like, you're like you're motivating yourself. Not leading. You're motivating yourself. But when you have people who are, are aspiring to be like you, they want to be around you, that's far more grating. They're like, man, like, I see something different about this woman. I see something different about this man that I want to be. And when you have that, like, you don't even need the accomplishment that you are working for. You just, like, like if you have that, the, the paperwork is, is you don't even need that, <laughs> to be honest. Like, because their word of mouth from what they're saying is like, man, this person is trustworthy. This person goes an extra mile. It's so much greater. So, you mean to tell me. That when Jesus ascended to heaven, that the disciples were not supposed to go seek counsel from each other? Like, imagine that. Your, your, your mentor. Like, all this time, they were like, hey, my time is He's like, my time is coming. And they're like, all right, God, we got you. Like, I ain't gonna deny you. Even though Peter denied three times. And it's like, man, I got you, bro. Like, man, we, we about to cut somebody's ear off of you, man. But he he died, like. He was on the cross. Even they they didn't they didn't really quite get the pressure that he was in the sin that he's gonna three days later he's gonna be, restore his his temple. They was thinking about a physical temple. Uh, after Jesus went through uh, that's that's another story for another day when he went through the temple and because they were kind of keeping people back from you know properly praising him. Um, Taxing them after they went from three, you know, maybe like a three day journey. And they're like, oh, you gotta pay for this, you gotta pay for that, you gotta pay for that. And these people of a different faith, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's a real pain. And you get all the way there, it's like, man, my sacrifice is not worthy enough because I got blemishes on this and this and this. And Jesus was like, bro, like, you ain't gonna keep them out like that. You know, I, I, my ministry is for everybody, and y'all being bogus. Um, <clears throat> but the disciples, they were facing hard times, and they needed a shoulder to lean on. Uh, especially with their ministry, like, you need somebody to go through that's going through the same battles that you are going through. Um, and for that, for us, for therapy and counseling, like, don't be ashamed of seeking help. Profession, for professional or just a friend because even though it's painful to talk about our pains whether it's small or large it's 
necessary to start the healing process because some people cling to these pains for like 30 40 50 60 years and they never let it go and they wonder why things are shut off like you know their relationships are strained because they allow this pain to to boil up and that's something that i've been considering uh studying how to be a counselor studying how to be a therapist uh just for me to reach out to my peers and even if i'm not going to the school for for therapy or counseling um it's still good for me to like teach myself how to be vulnerable so i can allow other people to be vulnerable around me i'm one person who likes to listen a lot and that's something that is a gift because sometimes we are quick to talk but slow to uh not just talking about people giving you orders like hey go get this go get the dishes done i want you to do this assignment but when people tell you their stories and that's something that i love to do like i want i want you to talk to me you know what i'm saying like i want you to tell me your story so then when you do that i can tell you mine and then that it, it builds up that level of trust and it's like man i know this person won't say won't judge me i won't know this person won't say anything about me like i know they'll pray for me and they'll probably have different opinions but at the same time like i trust them you know what i'm saying so hey we all experience pain G- jesus is our counselor our mentor and everything but he wants us to go and seek help he doesn't want that pain to be on our shoulder. He wants all of us to help each other bring that pain to him on the altar. Cause some people don't they don't know how to get to how to get there. So we need each other's help. So, you know, as always, I love y'all. Till next time, next Friday at four o'clock. And keep a lookout for the palms. This is gonna be every other Monday. I'ma you know, I'ma see what I do. You know what I'm saying? So till next time. Right, y'all.